Hello and welcome to yet another Revit tutorial. Today we will dive deeper into the rack topics so or retrieval augmented generation. Uh, last time we did an introductory video where we showed the um, internal data storage of Revit. But this is, yeah, let's be honest, this is nice for prototyping, but this is not to be used if, yeah, if, if you want to either put it to production somewhere or you actually want to have a huge database. It's very slow, it's file based, and even with, yeah, if you just add uh, some hundred um, embeddings in there, it's already getting an issue. And there's also missing features which other solutions have. And the solution we are going to look at uh, today is Chroma, which is open source uh, and very powerful. And yeah, you can just run it on your PC or in the cloud, uh, it's free. And so let's get going. Uh, to the easiest way, I mean, there's lots of ways to install Chroma. Certainly, there's no yeah, there's no application you can just download and start. Uh, but the simplest thing actually I found is to use Docker. So first, please download the Docker application. Um, you can see here it's available for systems and um, it's just an installer, so there's nothing to worry about. Docker is um, a tool that allows you to run code or applications in separate containers which is good for security and also makes it much easier to handle them as we will see. Yeah, once you downloaded that and you started up Docker, um, you should have the application running, uh, but not really see anything in it yet. Now, there is exactly one step we will <laughs> need to take now, which is uh, going to require us uh, to, to, to write yeah, at least a small command. And for Mac US users, this will be in the terminal. So you go just to applications and open terminal. And for Windows users, this will be the command line CMD. I think you can just press start and search for CMD and you will find it. And here we are. And now, uh, let me quickly check. I also don't have it open now. Uh, yeah, we need to write down Docker pull Chroma DB Chroma. And then we press enter. And now in my case, you can see it didn't really happen anything because I already did that. But in your case, you will see that there will be some downloading happening. And what's happening, it's downloading a Docker container, which is capable of running Chroma. So we don't need to do anything. No Python code, no, no nothing. And that is also the only thing we've been doing in the, in the terminal. Now we will never look at it again. Now we can go to Docker. And first we go to images. And in here, you should now see Chroma DB, Chroma. This is our container, we, or our image, sorry, not container, our image we just downloaded. And also there's one single step we need to take now for the when we run it for the first time, we press run. We go to the optional settings, and now once you need to enter the host port here, which is 8000 if you don't want to change it. And it's good to keep it at this, as this is what Rivet is expecting. And then you press run. I will not do that now because uh, it then creates a container and I already have data in there. But this is basically what you do. And then you can actually stop it. And in the future, you will always be able to run it from here. It automatically creates a container with some random name. As we can see, in my case, it called the Inspiring Hoover. And there we can see that the image is the Chroma image. And yeah, I already have it running. Let me stop it. But basically, uh, the one single thing you need to do in the future to have your Chroma database and all your data available um, is press this run button here. And then let's actually see, yeah, we can even use this short link here. You can check if it's running by opening this and then adding slash API slash v1. And when if you can see a hard nanosecond heartbeat here, then Chroma is up and running and yeah, you're ready to go. I also have all those links uh, to, to download Docker for this local host and everything in the uh, in the rivet file. We will look at it in a second. But basically now Chroma is ready. And then there's one more thing for this example. I mean, I needed some data we will be looking at. So um, there's this nice website Kaggle, which lists lots of data that can be used for projects um, and I found some British Airways reviews in JSON format which is very easy to handle in Rivet. So as you can see it's 5.1 uh, megabyte of data 
I um, I think it's like 4,000 reviews or something around those lines. Um, and yeah, we have some information about it and text from users. So basically, I just download this and extracted it. And then, yeah, then we can go to Rivet. So first of all, as I said, there is instructions. And yeah, they are a bit more extensive, but basically the first two steps are only to be done once. We already did all this here, so we made... Oh, no, not ready. Sorry, but there's one more small thing. We still need to add the Chroma plugin. So if you are... Um, I already did this, but you need to go to plugins and then add it here for this project you want to use it, and then it will be there. That's all you need to do in Rivet. And then, yeah, there's the second thing. We will need to add some data. As I said before, I um, used this British Airways data, and so I... Um, we will just do this now. I mean, I already have it imported, so we will not run it fully, but I will show you a small bit of it at least. Because basically we have this um, read data here. I just see I named those a bit um, a bit stupid. This is fetch data from ChromaDB, and this is reading data to, to insert it. Um, so we are starting here in this graph. And here we have a read file um, node, and in this one we need to select our data file. And so in this case, it's this British Airways reviews file. And then, as this is returning a string, we need to use extract JSON to, to turn it into an object again. And as I said, I will not run it now because it's a lot of data and it will be very slow. Um, but what we are doing then is we have an array of those um, objects and we will put it to a subgraph. And as always, we have the split uh, enabled. And then it's very important to also set this limit, this max amount, the standard is 10 up to a high number because otherwise your import will just stop. And if you want to, um, yeah, maybe if you don't have a very powerful machine, maybe you want to activate sequential, then it will take longer, but maybe it's working better for you. So then it will only handle each data set after, separately after each one. It also doesn't run too long then. I think it took me like 10 minutes with sequential or something like that. Okay, and then we are going into a process data um, graph. And this looks more, much more complicated than this. And also here I will actually run this graph because I want to show you what it's doing. And this is also a good um, point to, to show you another important or nice feature. We have a graph input here, input here. This is just our now our review, our review object, each one. I mean, we activated the split, so it's just always going to be one. Um, but here we can also add a default value. So I have this check mark on, and now I have one, I put one example in here. And that means that for testing purposes or for creating this graph, I can just run this graph here. I don't need to start at the, um, yeah, at the first graph. I can just start here. Um, and still check if everything is working fine. So that's also what we are doing now. So we are working with this data set now. So we can see there is a, yeah, we, let's make it bigger. We have some information, someone wrote less than a premium experience and you can see when it was written and that the trip was verified at the full text and lots of different information. That the guy was in the business class, London to Kevlavik and so on. <clears throat> and now we are going to extract two different types of data. First, we need our embedding data. So that is the data we want to do a semantic search on. And in this case, I chose this to be the, the headline. So basically the, the subject, what, what, uh, what the user wrote, like less than a premium experience and the whole text. And I added here a markdown so that the AI can later see that this is the headline. And yeah, but it's not necessary. And this is basically what we are going to use as um, safe stores data and store embeddings for that it can be searched upon. And then we are creating lots of metadata. So as we can see here, our goal is that we create, um, I mean, I did not use all the fields I randomly selected them. So I thought it might be interesting to know that um, the, the trip was verified, so that we only get valid reviews, um, that we have the year separately, um, before that, we only have a mixed date field, we aircraft, the seat type, from where to where, and if it was recommended so that we can filter by recommended or not recommended reviews. 
For most of the things, this just means we are just extracting the fields like here. We are just using the extract object path for is verified. For some of the other fields, at least two of them, it means we need to do a bit of, um, uh, of regex extraction like here for the date. Usually we're getting it like this for September 2023 if we only want the date. Uh, so the year we need a regex. And for this, just ask ChatGPT. Just paste it your example. Tell it what you expect it to return and that you need regex and then uh, you just get working code usually. That's also how I did it here. Same for the root. I just told it that I have strings like this, London to Kevlevik, and I need London and Kevlevik separately. So it provided me this regex here and now we have two outputs, one for London, one for Kevlevik, and this works. One more note uh, about this. There, I thought we could have also used the destructure node because it's very easy to, to, to get lots of extractions from those fields in one node, but uh, the bad thing about it is it's not returning proper types. So if we inserted this here, we had like lots of, um, yeah, we, we needed to, it, it didn't uh, work yet. It wasn't proper data yet. It didn't recognize that string. So that's why we are doing this with lots of extract object node paths instead, because it's still cleaner. Okay, but not too much about that. So now we have our metadata and we have our main data we want to search upon. And now we are going to the save data graph. And in here, it's pretty simple, actually. First of all, we are put our data is being put to this get embedding node because we need this yeah, vector representation to be able to search upon it. And we move this to the embedding um, port of the chroma add function. Then, of course, the document itself is so the raw data is going in here. And then we have our metadata, which needs to be an object, which we already have here with keys and values. Um, yeah, then we are also generating some random ID, maybe a bit long. We are using a random number for between uh, and putting it to this hash function and then connecting this to the ID port because it looks like they are not automatically generated if you do not do that. Um, and in this, uh, this uh, note here, there's not much to do otherwise. You only need to make sure that um, you write down how the collection or database you want to say store the data in is being called. So in this case, I call the British Airways Reviews. And of course, if we later want to read the data from there, we need to know this name. Yeah, and that's basically it. If we run this, it will take a while, but then all our data will get added to the Chroma database. And if the Docker container is running, this should all work. And now, finally, to the main graph where we're actually doing something with the data. It's a pretty simple example. I will probably expand on this in the future by using it to explain function calling so that the AI can actually um, request data um, on its own and also set filters and other options. But basically what we have here is we are having, I, I decided on some inputs that we, which we can now play around with. First of all, if uh, the user recommended the, uh, the uh, British Airways, second of all, our C types, economy class, business class, and so on. Please note, it's very important to write it exactly as it is in the data. So for example, the C here must be an uppercase, otherwise it will not match. Uh, well, here there is no uppercase and so on. Then uh, a question the user wants um, the AI to answer. And of course, we have some instructions for the AI. So here it's it's not, uh, yeah, I just put this together in like 30 seconds. So uh, basically, yeah, we are just explaining the um, AI that it's supposed to help us um, based on some British Airway reviews and that we will ask questions. And it should also uh, include at least one quote that's most relevant to answer our question. But yeah, you can, you can, this can be done better for sure. And now we need to do one more separate, one more step. We need to fetch the data from ChromaDB. And we are putting here the information about what question we want to ask and also about the two, um, yeah, about the, the filters we want to set. So we only want economy class um, results and only recommended results in this case. And let's first run it so that we have some data. Mm, okay, let's go in. Now, the first part here, let's go down first, is simple. We are put using our question, we are put we are creating an embedding, and then we are sending it in. So basically that is our semantic search we are doing. We are searching for how is the entertainment system. 
uh, if it's good or not. And then, yeah, this part here is um, our object. And yeah, this you can actually do very complex filtering with Chroma, but the syntax is a bit, yeah, you need to know your way around JSON objects. And so I kept it pretty simple here. Um, maybe in the future we can do more interesting stuff. But basically we are now in this object, we are creating an end filter. That means that all these three conditions here need to be true. And now I said one more thing, which I think should always be said. We only want reviews of uh, verified uh, people so that they actually took the trip. So um, I'm uh, looking for um, trip verified in this field. So I always do this. There's not connection to any input. And then the seed type is coming from the input and the recommended flag is coming from the input. And now for this case, we would have economy class, yes. And now this goes to the where clause, which can be activated with this input port here. And besides that, there's not much to do in Chroma query. Um, you are, of course, referencing the collection name. So in this case, British Airways reviews. You can um, decide upon the number of results. So just type how many you want in here. Now it's 10. And yeah, basically that's all we need to know and do. And if all this gets executed, we can see it actually returns 10 items. Uh, let's make this big for a second. And we can see here, uh, now we are getting um, our, yeah, the ID we created, uh, the metadata we sent in, the document, which is the first the headline, then a line break, and then the content. Um, so the, the review itself, sorry. And then also the distance. So that means again, like a, like information for which of those reviews is actually matching the request, uh, the query the best. And we can see that, for example, this, it's always sorted from um, uh, ascending as it looks. So this here is the most matching one. Yeah. And now we can just return all this data to the AI and exactly what we do. We are just returning those items. And now in the main graph, we are putting this together. We have this very simple template, uh, very simple template here where we are adding the user question at the top. And we are using again, markdown syntax with uh, headings because um, OpenAI also uses that a lot. So I think it is, uh, knows it very well. And then also the British Airways reviews, and then we are getting the reviews here in this then looks like this, yeah, not very readable for a human, but because the whole object is put its JSON in here, but very fine for an AI system. And then, yeah, we just have a chat node with our system prompt, with the prompt, and then we are getting our answer. And in this case, a question about the entertainment system we are getting, uh, based on British Airway user reviews, the opinion on the entertainment system vary. Some customers had issues and so on. And there's also our big our quotes in here. I mean, it, it references them by the ID, which does not look nice, but still it knows where the data we can now check if this day where this data is coming from. Um, yeah, and that's it. So this is working. And let's do one more run. Let's look at not recommended uh, reviews. And maybe I can't, we are interested in first class. <clears throat> and now we want to know um, it's the crew friendly and let's run this. Okay. Now we're getting a new answers does not appear to be friendly. One reviewer mentioned the check-in step at Singapore were abrupt and unhelpful. And the stewardess and board lacked first class training. So yeah, there's also again, our quotation here. So yeah, that's it basically. There is not, uh, but here in this case, I think it also didn't pull very many, very much reviews. There doesn't seem to be many people having written this something about the first class, but yeah, it does not matter um, as this is just example data, but this is how you can, uh, um, yeah, enhance your retrieval augmented generation with Chroma. And I think it's pretty powerful and yeah, probably see you in the next video about function calling. Bye-bye.